mic up, Aaron, and let's get into this because my God, I don't know what that was, but hold on. Now I gotta struggle. There it is. Hey! Oh my God. Hello, hello. There she is. Hey! <laughs> And there she is. EBX Aaron, mighty mighty, thank you for those claps. <laughs> oh my gosh. EBX Aaron, thank you so much for coming on the show. I, I truly appreciate it. Yes, thank you. Wild but sober for that. Woo. <laughs> Everybody, look at those lips. Look at those lip. He don't have teeth. He just has darkness. <laughs> just darkness. No teeth, just darkness. Yeah. Can that like be the name of a, an album? <laughs> For a metal band? <laughs> no, it's the name of my next porno. <laughs> uh, anyways, yeah. how are you? I, I don't. I, it, okay. Uh, how are you? How how is your day going? <laughs> how how is things and stuff? Things and stuff are so good. Uh, just you know, living the Twitch dream the and dream. Uh, doing the most today and. I, I have my face on before noon, which is different for me on a stream day, <laughs> yeah. but it's all good. And I'm, I'm really just, I'm happy to start being able to do collabs with people on Twitch. Yeah. Cause that's something I haven't really been able to do a whole lot up until the last couple of months or so. So I'm, I'm great. <laughs> why, why weren't you able to? Oh, wow. But so, but thank you so much for that host. I appreciate that. Why weren't you able to, uh, to, to, to do it's, more collabs it's, it's not even that i wasn't able to it's just that i hadn't really started to look at all the hoes hoes you know I guess, <laughs> i'm just i'm gonna i'm gonna mute the things you guys can keep doing all that good stuff i just i'm gonna <laughs> mute the i'm gonna mute the uh things for right now just so we can talk yeah no it's all good um but what i was gonna say was it's not that i wasn't able to it's that i hadn't really broken into where anybody was approaching me mm -hmm. or if i was gonna approach somebody right, uh, right, it wasn't right. really like i had a whole lot of traction yet you mm -hmm. know mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. i feel like now i can comfortably do it and it's not forced it's like either people are coming to me like hey do you want to be on my podcast or my collab or i can reach out and be like hey look at my channel <laughs> Maybe yeah. I can come on your show, do, <laughs> you know. Maybe we do a little some some. No, yeah. I I feel you. I feel and it's, you know like I, I feel that because it, it like first coming on this Twitch, I feel like that it's uh, it's kind of an overwhelming experience, especially if you don't have like the whole tech thing down and you're learning all this stuff, yeah. and it's like you kind of overwhelm yourself mm -hmm. just getting on to stream and then you know figuring out how to stream without like all these crashes and all these awful things that like to happen in the middle of or at the beginning or whatever it is things things that you set up yesterday are not as they were <laughs> and they are now today yep. something completely different <laughs> And, or there was an update for an app or your computer or something and it rendered something else fucked yes. up. It's just, oh. yeah. <laughs> so like when you're first starting out and even as you go, because this, it doesn't stop, it's not like, it's not like you get experience and then the, and then the problems stop. It's just that they just keep getting, they, they keep going. They just, uh, you get better at solving problems. So yeah, uh, it, it's, it's, it's kind of like an experience that you sort of have to like take a little at a time and to like go outside of what you're doing and outside of like your learning curve and outside of, you know, trying to get a handle on, you know, the technology and the platform, uh, going outside of that, it just seems like so out of bounds and so exhausting. I mean, like I'll ask my, like I've had this stream deck that I just got up and running like a, like a couple weeks ago. I've had it for like a month or two, you know, <laughs> And it's just like, just the thought of setting it up and learning it and trying to figure it out. I was just like, oh God, I just, I'm, just, I'm just not doing it right now. I'm just not doing it. I, it's just going to sit there and that's it. And, and then and then eventually I was like, okay, it is time to incorporate the Streamlab. <laughs> and so I feel like that, that that's part of the journey and that's part of the understanding of this, this platform is like, you got to kind of take it slow. And if you try to rush shit, it gets real weird real fast. 
I mean, even yeah. now, you you know, like, I, I'm not trying to call you out or anything, but, you know, you've been having problems with your camera and literally right now. <laughs> right I'm now. like, why? <laughs> <laughs> and so it, it, it's just it never ends. Stream Deck is the best. Yes, I agree. Yes, I, I love Stream Deck. I love my Stream Deck. <laughs> Uh, I also love the uh, Stream Labs uh, uh, app as well. It's almost it, it's easier and it's a little it's way more intuitive than the Stream Deck. Uh, it's called Stream Labs Deck, and it yeah. automatically links up to your scenes and and your sources and and it, it's just it was incredible. Like yesterday for the music stream, I was able to control different scenes and stuff from all over the room because I had to get up and I was moving from instrument to instrument. So I had little workstations and I could take my stupid phone with me and be like, okay, it's <laughs> it's bass yeah. all the time and it's the Zach cam. So I could just switch it from behind the drum set and it was amazing. Yeah. So it, it yeah, the, the certain pieces of technology, certain upgrades, you got to take it kind of slow. <laughs> Wild fake bot. Thank you for that follow. I appreciate that, buddy. Appreciate that. <laughs> appreciate your uh your um yeah thanks uh f the horny police <laughs> <laughs> f the horny police welcome welcome i appreciate you uh, being here but yeah uh, so how, how do you like for me i get really frustrated and i and i storm around and i punch boxes sometimes uh which is ridiculous it's just it's so stupid and it's sad and uh very 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 male centric of me uh to punch a box or my bed uh <laughs> but it's better but it's better than the, the wall i think it's yes. much better than the wall and uh it, it, anyways i get really frustrated i'm uh, how do you handle like that kind of pressure that kind of like especially like cuz there's always these problems that occur right before the stream too, you know, or it, how do you, how do you handle that? How do you, how do you, how do you, how do you process these, those, those situations? I think that if, if I have enough time to get upset, I will. <laughs> <laughs> Basically. So like if the night before, like if I'm just like fucking around on my computer and I, I just decide to work on something in my stream, uh, or, or in OBS or something. And like, something's not working. I'm going to be like, so frustrated by it. Incredibly frustrated by it. I might scream a little bit. I'll, I might, I might punch a pillow. I don't destroy anything, but I might be a little fucking angry about it, right. but I know I'll figure it out because I feel like streamers develop this troubleshooting ability. And it's like, we, you just have to tell yourself, you'll figure it out before you go live. That's it. You'll figure it out. Just breathe, Period. Through, breathe through it. Let's go. <laughs> yeah. Just you, you have to figure it out or else you're not streaming. Therefore right. you must figure it out. Right. But right. if it's something that happens like during your starting soon screen, which is the best time for technical issues of course. to happen, uh, that's when I start to like flop sweat and I'm like, oh no, <laughs> oh no, oh no. Okay. What do I do? Okay. Breathe uh and then it's like okay well um i'll figure it out i guess or we're gonna have to end the stream like close obs end it like re like that's the crappiest part is when you can't fix it without closing obs uh, ending stream and, and do it oh. you lose all your lurkers like it is so stressful and as, as dumb as it sounds like it it is really stressful to have to restart Mm. And it's distracting from whatever you're doing. Say you start having tech issues in the middle of a podcast, like, oh, every vibe's killed, killed, <laughs> but by gone. Right. It, and that's, that's how it is. If you do a music, it's anything you're having good games, like whatever. It's just, it kills all the good vibes that you might've had. And it's hard to come back from that. So yeah, it, it's a great place. you're absolutely right. What once, once. Once once the once once the the pooch has pooped on the floor, it's well now there's shit on the floor, so <laughs> it stinks. It's not exactly. It's not not what you want in life. So how okay? So since we're talking about handling stress, how do you handle stress in I just like outside of streaming? Like how do you I, I, like this is a big thing that I've been trying to get a handle on is like how how to maintain uh you know a, a healthy a relationship with stress and with you know mounting issues and 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 you know all the things that you have to deal with and process uh, dealing with it in a healthy way um 
So I, 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 that's that's what I'm working on. And so I, I, I don't know. How, how do you do it? Tell me how to do it. How do you, how do, you do it? How do you keep it together? <laughs> do you keep it together? I mean, that's and that's the golden question. Do you keep it together? <laughs> uh, you assume I keep it together. Well, uh, I know you said you but... scream a little, but I just, I, you know, like the, 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 you have to have like I can tell just by the way you talk that you have these sort of different coping mechanisms that you've developed yeah. over your life. So I, I'm just curious on what are your coping mechanisms and how you get past these. I mean, you know, serious issues because. No matter what anybody wants to think, serious problems are going to affect your life, whether you oh, yeah. whether you want it or not. It's going to happen. Bad things happen all the time to great, wonderful people, and there's nothing you can do about it. But it, uh, but there's but it all comes down to how you react to it. And so, how do you yeah. react to it? tears? <laughs> tears. Sometimes tears. Literally, it, that literally. And I just I was telling this to Trish the other day. It was like we were in a crappy situation at at a gig with that we had we got there it was in indiana so it was about a six hour drive yeah. and uh, we got there it was at this uh, a, like the first gig of a stretch of like five or six gigs right in a row mm -hmm. and we pulled up and we found out that it was a smoking building and as a singer Oof. uh that's not okay and we just didn't know for whatever reason that it was a smoking building and we found out that indiana damn it camera help <laughs> she's here she's here she's here everybody she's here um, a voice in the sky has <laughs> has no voice right now but she is the person helping my camera helping her camera uh but i was yeah reina 100 and like it triggered me so bad and we walked up and i was already stressed out because we had like five or six gigs in a row and and our manager engineer producer human owner of the Winnebago is what he calls himself Kevin <laughs> um he comes out tells the group he's like I got really bad news and we're like what's wrong and he's like it's a smoking gig Ugh. and and I knowing this is the first of many gigs I must accomplish this week I was like guys let me cry for like five minutes. Like I literally just had to sob for like five minutes. And then I was like, okay, now I can feel now I can do it. I'm good now. But like, that's an example of like, I could not stop those tears from coming if I tried. So I just told everybody I, I got to cry for a few yeah. minutes and here we are. And then I got over it and you did hear a Sean beta. Yes, you did. He's <laughs> on the other side of the camera screaming at Trish because Trish is standing here behind the camera. Uh, <laughs> but, but you know, that's a good example of pre pandemic, but you know, post slash currently in a pandemic right now, yeah. I mean, dealing with the stress, honestly, and it, I was, I actually posted today about it. Like I I've been posting every day, like these giant TLDRs of, of what it's like to be me. Uh, and today's was, uh, along the lines of, if you're gonna live a crazy lifestyle or a really hectic lifestyle, you have to know your limits and you have to schedule yourself rest time. Mm. And that's how I deal with it, honestly, is knowing that there's a light at the end of the tunnel where maybe I have six days where I'm just like nonstop, like between streams and doing stuff like this, like collabs on the side, yeah. or I do vocal lessons too on my days oh. not streaming. So like, you have to meticulously schedule downtime. And that's how I, I de-stress whether I'm laying in bed, watching fucking ghost hunters or some kind of ghost hunters show, or I'm playing DVD or I'm watching other streamers. That's how I, I deal with stress is I have to make sure that I'm scheduling myself time to de-stress. If that makes sense. It makes so much stress. I mean, to the point, <laughs> I mean, no, so much stress. Did I just say that? It makes so much stress talking about these not being stressed out. Okay. It does though. Yeah, it does. No, it, it makes, it makes so much sense to the point to, to that, that these are the things that I'm talking about with my therapist. <laughs> She's like, you know, you have to schedule time to stop. Like you have to yeah. stop. Yeah. And it's like, uh, the thing is, is that I know that I can be. I can be work, 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 but I also know I can be so lazy 
to, to the point of being a degenerate. You know what I mean? Like, like that's, and that's the problem. And that's, I think there's some fear in that, like, because that has kind of gone away, especially since the pandemic that, that, that need to just lounge and watch a movie and just relax that need. And, and, and it, and, and just beyond lounging, because you're right, you need to re relax and chill out mm -hmm. and let your brain sort of, you know, relax for a second. But it, it's it it's like I go further than that. I'll just sit there and watch, you know, old South Park for days, yeah. you know, days and days and, and everything just goes by the wayside and, and, and I get nothing done. And so there's sort of this internal fear that that sort of mindset will come back as well because I, I, I know that I have this laziness, although I don't really see a whole lot of evidence of it, uh, but it's still like I'm, I fear that I, I will just waste my time and do stupid things, you know, that, that I get nothing done. And, and plus, over this last year, I've also made a lot of work for myself that needs to get done, and if I don't do it, it's, it's not going to get done. So I've also... <laughs> Doing this podcast has completely made, uh, uh, you know, just so much more work for myself. So I do have to stay on top of it. I don't know. Do you, so I, I don't know. Does that make sense to you? Like that, 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 which seems irrational, this fear of being lazy, but I don't know. I think I'm not the only one that has that or at least, uh, some no. amalgamation of it. And I think that I'm a really good example of that. Like what you just said, mm -hmm. like I, I am so incredibly lazy, but <laughs> when it comes to my own shit and building my own empire, uh, between Twitch and Patreon and LC banks, like mm -hmm. these are my empires. Right. And if I have a list of to do's for those things, I can't rest until they're done. Yeah. Uh, yeah. because they're like my whole, my whole existence at this point. Uh, like this is the first time I've been a hundred percent self-employed in my whole life, right. which is crazy, but that's what the pandemic has done. It, I, I was in the wedding and corporate industry and yeah. there was no version of me playing on stage with nine unmasked people while it's, you know, it's, it's too much. Mm -hmm. Uh, so I retired, I was working on retiring from that <laughs> anyway, but the pandemic just like put it over the edge. And I told my boss, he's like, yeah, I know. We just had to kind of have the conversation. Um, wait, wait, can you can you can elaborate? So, were you doing like wedding planning, or were you playing music, like band music? Like, what were you doing? Oh, thank you for that woo, Raina. Woo! I, I know, I I know, I uh, I killed the sound, but woo, we'll do it in, in <laughs> spirit. In spirit, we'll do it. In spirit, we'll do it. Um, yeah. So I actually that was a lot of my twenties. I was hired in a wedding band, a full time working wedding band, when I was twenty one. Huh. And I literally retired from that band this year. Oh, shit. We didn't do one gig last year. Uh, I, I, I turned down every gig that came my way. Cause mm. I was there, believe it or not, there were gigs happening. Yeah. I'm sure the same thing oh, was yeah. happening in your area. I oh, heard some horror stories. Oh Yeah. Oh, bro. I know a couple planners in, in your area. Dude, dude, <laughs> the hippies ran amok last summer. The hippie, I'm not joking. There was several Ohio based slash Indiana based hippie festivals. They're, they're my friends. I know them. I've talked to them about it. Not one case came from there. We we have no reports of one case of COVID coming from our festival. You don't fucking know hippie. No. Okay. You don't fucking know hippie. And look, again, I love these people. They're, they're my friends. But it's like, you don't fucking know, bro. Uh, no. But it, on the other hand, I'm like, oh, chop one up to freedom, I guess. You know, <laughs> so here we are. I mean, if you if you feel like you can go and, and, and deal with it, uh, who am I to say not to? But it just sucks that we all have to sort of deal with the repercussions of, you know, staying in lockdown longer, but. Yeah. And there were literally people having weddings during the pandemic, yeah. whether oh, they yeah. were illegally like based, like, you know, how the requirements mm -hmm. have been like right. certain amount right. of people, what the precautions are, whether they were doing those things or not. Yeah. I, I was being offered gigs to do that. And I was like, and this is with a uh, four person front line. I was one of four singers. And then there's a five person back line too, meaning the instrumentalists. Mm -hmm. So this is nine unmasked people on stage. And if everybody in the room is, or is not relatively following orders at this time, this was last summer, like what the fuck? <laughs> I don't really care. 
Yeah. I don't yeah. care that you're even doing all the right things because this whole thing isn't the right thing. Right. Like, oh, it killed me. So needless to say, I retired because <laughs> there there's no version of me doing that job for 10 years and then taking a year off and then being like, I think I can do this again. I just, I feel like I've come too far on Twitch and as a person and like even just my personal growth, I'm not, I'm not that person who can fake doing something I don't want to do anymore. I, if that I, makes sense. It totally <laughs> does. It totally does. Yeah. Like I think I was putting on that face because it was my main income source mm -hmm. and it's what I had been doing for so long and I was good at it. Yeah. I, it was keeping me relatively in shape and just, you know, my voice in shape, physically in shape. And I just I just realized I knew that it was getting to the point of like, I, I can't do this anymore because I don't want to, yeah. but I didn't know how bad it was until it was gone. And mm -hmm. I was like, oh, I, I can't go back to this ever. And then, you know, in the process of that finding Twitch and it's like, well, if all I have to do is stream on Twitch, do all the things I need to do for Patreon and also eventually go out and gig with my band again, my own personal band, Elsie right. Banks, like what a life, you know, right. like that's, Oh, hi, there's cat. Hey, um, hey. <laughs> but yeah, it's, it's just every, everything has changed because of this, you know? Yeah. I, I, um, we played a wedding last, last summer and nobody was masked. It was in Michigan too. It was in Adrian. Adrian, Michigan, Adrian, Adrian, Michigan. Uh, it was, uh, it, 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 like no one was masked and everybody was, was hammered and they were, you know, do it. It was just like a reminder when we were doing it. Cause people didn't have masks on and they were like doing the drunk, like hovering around like, Hey, Hey. And then of course, Raina, she sings real nice and she's, you know, and she's pretty. And so like all like weird people are trying to come over and touch her hair and shit. So it's like, Oh God. It's a, it, not, that that what happened, but you know how it goes <laughs> with drunk people. They just get yes. in your space. They want to talk to you, and 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 if you're an attractive person, then they're gonna want to like more. And and it's just it it's 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 a bother. Um, but but it was really off putting to see this gathering of people, and it was completely illegal. And, yeah, you know, it, it was just such a weird situation, but people were very grateful for the live music. So, I mean, we played probably like three gigs last year and everyone was very grateful. But uh, I mean, that was the only one where we left like, OK, I don't think we can be doing this shit no more. <laughs> no. Yeah, it's like it's, one bad experience is too much. It's almost. too much. It was too and much. I, and I heard other people's bad experiences and it was enough for me to go, it's, it's not worth it for me to even like, if I walked into that situation, I wouldn't be okay enough to perform. Yeah. Like yeah. I would have to breach my contract and leave. It's and that's of, not something I'd want to do, I get you know? It. So it's, oh, it just, it terrifies me. It still terrifies me. Yeah. Like we're on the up and up and like it, it's, you know, vaccinations are happening and it still scares the shit out of me. Yeah. Like, well, and then the vaccines just, scare the shit out of you too, because I mean, this was yep. like a rush order under the fucking under the Orange Man administration. So it was like, okay, so now we're gonna pump this shit in there—a a thing that uh, that on normal times uh, takes about five years to yeah. to 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 process and to do all the testing and to make sure. I mean, they they there there's a warning for pregnant women, not you know, like because they didn't do a whole lot of testing with pregnant women, right. and what? <laughs> okay, yeah. and there's all these nurses and doctors who are like, I'm not putting that in me. So, you know, it's really, you know, I'm not an anti-vaxxer, by the way, everybody. Um, I'm not getting the vaccine, but not for now, I guess. But I'm not an anti-vaxxer. Go pump yourself full of the weird stuff. That's fine. And if it's effective, that's great. I'm happy. Uh, but it, it does seem a little suspect. And, 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 and I yeah. can understand why people are frustrated. I can understand why people are like, you know what? Fuck this. I, I we, you know, I lost my business or, or my main street is all shut down and shuttered up and, and Walmart and Target are, are killing it. But, you know, right. mom and pop on main street is, is gone forever. So I, I understand where people are getting frustrated about like, what well, what do we do? We, we either sit yeah. here and starve and let our, 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 uh, our local economy fall into the cracks or, 
do we run back out and get it? And now we got to like shove this weird poison, not poison. Sorry, everybody. Weird. Well, I mean, um, inherently, I understand it, it, why you a, say that. It, it's just weird. Look, I'm not saying I'm not I'm not advocating for anything. I'm just saying that I can see the frustration that people are showing around you know the world, and, and yeah. especially when all this contradicting um, information is out and. The weirdness about the vaccine and the weird contradicting uh, 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 policies that were put in place over the, you know, where, where you know, restaurants and, and uh, the mask, you could sit without a mask at the table, but you can't walk around without a mask. Airplanes, you have to sit right next to the fat, heavy breathing guy. No mask or even with a mask like that don't do shit. And so... <sighs> By the way, we have two vaccines. Yeah, I know, mental. I know there's two vaccines. You have to do, you have to do, so you got to do, there, there, there's more than two vaccines, right? There's like several different companies that are. are there's, I think so, there's three you know. now. Yeah. So, you know, again, I'm not saying don't get the vaccine. I'm not saying any of this stuff. All I'm saying is I can see the frustration that people are facing right now. And, 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 and it's weird, you know, like it's weird that. I mean, people want to get married. People want to, you know, celebrate their lives that, you know, I, it, it's a frustrating time. It's very frustrating. And uh, it is. And I, I, you know, I don't know what to do. I, I don't know what to do. And and I'm honestly, I'm starting to get that it's where I want to perform in real life again. And I'm just like, you know, maybe I'm just going to start doing that again. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. So are you when I was talking earlier about um about experience in the van and you have plenty of experience touring uh do you you were kind of shaking your head like Ugh. <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah do, do you is that something that you're wanting to do like do you want to get back out there and do you or, or is that something that's in the plans or you know maybe down the road when things start clearing up a little Yes. To all that. Mm -hmm. It's, it's more or less just a matter of time. Mm -hmm. The problem was, and you know, this firsthand is that you can commit to going out on the road for like two weeks and playing a bunch of venues and it looks great on paper mm -hmm. and maybe they'll pay you a little bit of money for gas and they'll feed you, but that's about it. Yeah. Otherwise everybody's out of work for about two weeks. Mm -hmm nobody's making any money for two weeks and then you're on the road and you still got to sleep somewhere mm -hmm. still got to shower somewhere and you still have to deal with the fact that as a an entity the band you're going in the red mm -hmm. and each of these venues might have 10 people there so guess what you're not making door money or merch money right it doesn't matter what local bands you put on this show. If it's a local band, it's a local show, which means maybe 50 people will be in the bar. Fantastic. Maybe we'll do $200 sales and merch, but you probably won't. <laughs> these are, these are very specific situations. Yeah. And yeah. we were busting our ass and doing this once or twice a year for two weeks, not to mention almost every single weekend. Like this is not a joke. Like we would get as far away from Michigan and back in three days that we could. And then sometimes we'd take like two whole week vacations and leave oh, and nice. do like a bunch across the country to California and then come back um, and do more on the way back. So it's like, but we were never making any money. It was literally just play for let's hope 10 people at this bar who give a shit, who might buy a CD or even just a sticker. Like it is so bleak and I, it's as bleak. I want you to think it's as bleak. I'm talking to anybody listening to this podcast. I want you to understand how bleak it is because it is, it's a crap shoot, no matter what you do. Yes. You've got to pound the pavement. You've got to pay your dues as a musician, as a band or whatever you identify as, but at what point are you making the wrong choice as a business? You're losing money when you take work off for two weeks to go pound the pavement for five people at a bar. And that's, I know it's really bleak and I know it sounds really, really pessimistic, but unfortunately it's the truth. And like Jen said in the, in the chat, it's like every weekend in 2020, we were scheduled to go, to go out of town, whether it was just down to Tennessee real quick, we were going to take a weekend trip down to Texas and the panhandle. Uh, like we've made some friends ac across the country, but the problem is at what cost? Like, yes, I know that, this bar in Wisconsin wants us back all the time, but why, why would we come back <laughs> But why all the time? Like, does that make sense? Like it sounds, yes, it does. 
it sounds so incredibly bleak, but unless you've lived it and you've done it, and I've been living it for about five years, which isn't very long for right. a lot of fe- but people my age in a band. Right. Uh, most people have been doing this a decade before they're like, fuck this, I can't do it. Right. But but I've been doing it for five years and then a pandemic hit. And it's like, well, we make money on Twitch. What is that? <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> we make money on Twitch. What the Why fuck? would we? <laughs> what we I don't think we ever expected it to happen. Yeah. Like we could actually pay the RV bills <laughs> with our Twitch payout. Right. Like what is life? And so yeah. it was just for me it was a rude awakening. We haven't talked about it as a band terribly explicitly. Me and Jen have talked about it mm-hmm. pretty explicitly, but I think it's a rude awakening regarding our business finances as a band. There's no reason for us to go out every weekend. Right. That was right killing us monetarily and physically Mm -hmm. because like you said you're either in a van or an rv you're farting all over each other (laughs) it's just not a great time all the time right it's fun of course it's fun but it just uh, at some point something's got to give and you can't do it every single weekend the way we were i think that we were not terribly smart in how we used our spoons as i call them our our energy uh, levels. We just weren't always smart about that. So yeah. the TLDR on your question is, yes, we will be going back out and we will be playing real gigs. Uh, but sparingly we were playing probably eight to 12 gigs a month, yeah. whether they were in town or not in town. And that's too much. It's too much. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, there, there's that too. I mean, if you're playing in town, you know, a lot, you know, it's kind of oversaturation as such, but yeah. And that's what we absolutely did. We oversaturated in Michigan and luckily we've had, uh, you know, our neighboring States, we've had some really solid experiences in Wisconsin, Indiana, and pretty solid experiences in Illinois too, the Chicago area. Uh, and we've started to make friends in the stream world mm. in those places. Oh, no. So it's like, Oh, well, and now we've made a bunch of friends in Tennessee streamers. And it's like, and now we're all talking like, Oh, when a time comes, we'll do gigs together. Like yes. Yes. this is how networking should be. For sure. <laughs> For sure. Yeah. Because not, I mean, like this is, you're able to network now on a level where you're able to sort of, you know, you can blend communities on Twitch. Like, you know, I get a lot of, you know, people from the people I interview, people who come back and hang out and become part of the community because they're like, oh, cool, you know, whatever. Everybody, you know, everyone's sharing communities. Everybody, it feels so much different from how things were when you're playing live. It feels so much different, the support and stuff. And so when you take that sort of that ideal, uh, that idealism of, of every, there's enough for everybody, everybody can eat let's let's share the love let's show the love let let's you know raid over there let's you know let's host these guys let's let's get in our let's get in their discord and and you know say nice things and let's try to get people to come over let's get people to follow them let's try to help these people with their partner push and when you take that that idealism and you and you apply it to real life music i think you're going to get really beautiful things out of that because it it, it, because because outside of Twitch, the real music world is not that kind, right? <laughs> not that kind. There's never- it's really competitive. It's yeah. extremely competitive. Right. Especially yeah. females. And I know mm-hmm. it's like the way to equality is not to single out females necessarily, but at the same time, females in rock music specifically, it's like we, we like have to band together because there's there's you people go well there's not a lot of them that's why it's so rare but it's like no 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 you just aren't seeing them because people don't lift them up the way they do on twitch like you right. just said it's all about spreading the love and lifting people up on twitch the real life isn't like that at all <laughs> no, and as a band we've been trying to do that in real life mm-hmm. we have tons of really amazing female fronted bands here or all female or, or there's female representation or even just non-male representation, frankly. Right. I know that right. sounds terrible, but no, I, I, get I mean, it rock is male dominated, it unfortunately. Is. Any non-male representation is representation that we've spotlight. And so that's something that we put together before the pandemic, we used to put shows together of as many female uh, or again, non-male bands that we could find on one bill in one roof so people can discover us because it's just not 
it is not easy. People really do pit the females against each other. And it's like, I don't look like these other, uh, we're not a metal band, number one, but <laughs> I feel like all female fronted bands are metal. Like, I feel like we are very specifically rock, rock and roll. Like we're very reminiscent of classic rock and nineties rock. So I don't think we feel like we don't, I don't scream. Like we're not metal. I don't feel like our music feels like metal, but yet I'm still put in this category because that's the main genre that female fronted bands exist in. So they try to put us with those and it's like, well, this doesn't fit, but you have vaginas. It must fit. <laughs> oh God. <laughs> I'm serious. People oh. are like, well, what do you mean? It doesn't fit Well, the genre. It's not the same, but you guys are females. Yeah. Okay. Like, <laughs> it's, yeah. but it's like a hundred percent. Like that's literally how it, how it be is like sometimes, you know, yeah. it's just, oh, it's, it's ridiculous. I like Twitch culture a fucking lot better than yeah. real life culture. I will yeah, say that. Yeah. No, and and you know, like you're absolutely right. Uh, I, I like that. Uh, I liked how you framed it. First of all, that it's like you know the road to equality is not focusing on the female, but 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 you still can't take away from the fact that 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 there is this weird stigma, especially yeah. with dudes, and especially with with dude mus uh, uh, instrumentalist and female vocalist, and that's something that I've noticed just working. Just uh, how how uh. I've noticed that if if a woman uh, or whatever you identify as female, okay. Anyway, <laughs> much respect for everybody. All right, I love everyone. Uh, <laughs> just, uh, okay, the what I've noticed is that if, if females don't take on sort of almost this like male trait of of sort of you know being one of the guys and like joking around and you know farting or whatever it is. Uh, in the band structure itself, I've noticed that if they don't adopt sort of that male centric personality type, that they either get ignored or or, or mistreated. Honestly, uh, and and I've seen it several times in several different uh, projects that I've worked on, and um, it's it, it you know it's not easy, and I I, I see the effect that it has on on females who are on the road in the van with a bunch of dudes. It, it, it is it's real. It, it's real. So yeah, I, I do I agree with you completely. It's like the road to equality is not like sort of singling out each you know uh, right each each group of people that's being shit on, but it's more like. But but you do have to address that there are problems and that there are issues that do need to be addressed. It, it's like mm -hmm. this is it's not like there it's not like all these people are up in arms for no reason. You know what I mean? There, it's because yeah. there been there's reasons for people being upset about certain issues. So uh, they do need to be addressed, but they need to be addressed in an open and honest dialogue, like sort of what we're doing now. Yeah, and it's not like it, it, it's kind of being like stuck in that category of. If, and I, I don't even know if this is true anymore, but like when genres, when you release music and you have to choose genres, mm. there used to be just a genre called female fronted. <laughs> That's fucked up. Based yeah. on my gender, there's a genre because all vaginas must be together <laughs> right. in one little box. Right. No pun intended, but here we are. <laughs> <laughs> uh you know what i mean like oh, yeah. how Same dare you the... be anything yeah. but female fronted rock but we don't sound like a lot of other bands who and i mean i did it too you know a lot of female fronted bands i know of are metal they're melodic metal mm -hmm. or i don't know i feel like metal does unfortunately just happen to describe a lot of the ones i know but we don't fit in that little box yeah. and then people are surprised when we don't it's like what well, i Heaven forbid I have a vagina, but I sound different than the other vaginas. I just, it doesn't make any sense. Like, How I don't. How dare you? Get, get back in your <laughs> box, Aaron. You. Yes. Um, I, I, I was talking to this um, very successful guitarist. Her name is Ari O'Neill. She plays with, um, she plays with Beyonce, Jay-Z, and, and Shit. you know, like she's top tier. She's amazing. And she is running into this situation where she's like, I just want to be respected as a good guitarist and not yeah. as this female guitarist where all I get hired is to be in all girl bands and all this. She's like, I just want to be a musician. I just want to be that. 
And, and she's one of those, you know, one of those females who who adopted that like joke around with the dudes, one of the dudes kind of attitude because it, it's a form of survival and survival, it, like to to like the literal point and a survival of a career. Because yes. if she didn't have this, uh, if she didn't have that sort of that 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 mechanism she wouldn't, you know, she wouldn't vibe with the other musicians. And, and a, a big part of being a musician in a band, in a band structure, is being able to vibe with everyone else, get along, everything, yeah. you know, things have to go smoothly, especially in these professional settings, you know, uh, like these top-tier professional settings. The only person allowed to throw fit is Queen Bass, right? So it's, <laughs> we're not, everyone else just sort of has to deal with that. And, uh, 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 and, and, and that's just the way it is for that. But, yeah, there there is this struggle where women sort of get bunched up together because it's fun to have. Oh, look at them! Look at look at how they all right. sort of, you know, they're they're women up there doing it together. <laughs> yeah, you know, like it's it's. I know. I, I, which, by the way, I love it. By the way, I love it when a, a full female band of shredders are just like ripping it. I, like I just. There needs to be more females in music. I feel like females just have a, a, a lighter touch to, to reality than dudes. They have just a different approach to things that that uh, transcend, you know, that, that, that can actually add to playing, that can actually transcend the way things are playing because it's a different approach, you know? It, yeah. it, and and it, it, it's, there's more finality to it. I, I've seen, just in my personal witness, it, it, like I, I just feel like that the there there's a whole I just want to see more and the beautiful thing is because of YouTube because of Instagram you see so much more female influence and and uh, other than dude it's like the dude storm like I'm I'm over the dude storm I'm over the dude storm it's like we got plenty of dudes plenty of dudes let can we open up the doors get some others in involved dude storm. some I days love bring the days in bring the the she's and the and all of them just. Let's get it, let's get some different perspective on this shit because it's been a fucking dude storm for years and years and years. Yeah. Oh, uh, but yeah. And, and rant. You know, we should probably take some of these questions. Uh, <laughs> by the way, if you guys have questions for uh, for for Aaron, please do use the fresh bars. I got some questions in the uh, um, in the queue right now. It helps me keep track of them. So it's only one fresh bar to ask a question. And uh, so just by being here, you can afford it. So we'll go for the first question. This is by Mental. Emotions make you stressful. Uh, that's a question from We Speak English Good. Okay, Mental. Uh, emotions do make me stressed. Uh, certain emotions and certain emotions can get me a little. No, it's fresh. There you go, fresh. You're 26% fresh, Mental. <laughs> Thank you. You got to bring that freshness up, buddy. Uh, more fruits and vegetables. There you go. <laughs> uh, okay. So yes, emotions make me stressed out. Uh, let, let me see. Waffles or pretzels. Um, and that's for Aaron. And then that's of course from wild and sober. So do, do you prefer, and, and I do have to differentiate and I know, I know, uh, wild but sober is, I mean, he mods for you, right? He's one of your mods. Uh, he's not one of my mods, oh, okay. but we—he's found us on on Twitch quite some time ago, and and we've been hanging out in each other's streams oh, okay. for a while. Oh, <laughs> I, well, I love I, well, I love Wild and Silver. He's uh, he's just amazing, amazing uh, producer. Uh, I agree. I love everything in his SoundCloud. I fucking love. I adore amazing. it all. I use I use it all the time for. Uh... <laughs> You know what? You know, wild, wild and sober. You're right. You're right. It's wrong of me. Not. It, it, it's been way too long. Look, I'll do it as soon as we're done. All right. As soon as we're done, you get the diamond. You you be in the diamond club, and uh, <laughs> you, you're right. Well, I, I use your music way too often on my show and everything I do to not have wild but sober be in the diamond club here. So yes, wild but sober. <laughs> you're in the diamond club, baby. Um, what was what was the question? I forgot the question. <laughs> uh, waffles or pretzels? And and we're talking about oh. the soft baked pretzels. And I only brought it up wild but sober because he might have asked you in your stream before. I don't know. He likes to oh. he likes to troll <laughs> with these. This Actually, question. I mm, I'm gonna go with soft pretzels. <laughs> soft pretzels, pretzel gang, huh? And that's sort of what what he was saying earlier. What what? Yesterday he was in uh Reina's. Thing and we were doing wait you were no you weren't there never mind 
Yeah, I thought you were I was it. in Raina's stream. I don't remember what day. It was a, what think, day is it? It was probably a couple of days. Anyways, we, it was my dick. Raina does a, a, a my dick uh, by uh, by. Oh, Mickey I heard Avalon. it. <laughs> oh my god, I, I died. Woo! I died. Woo! Yeah, yeah. It. it, uh, it thank you for that. Woo, Raina. It's amazing, and now she's trying to get the well. She is having community members add to the 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 words because they're, they're she wants to put together a parody my dick and just we'll make our own version of my dick. And while yes. the silver had the greatest line, but it only applies to like this stream and her stream because we're talking about salad galley and it, it, it's the little things in the channel that you know happen that just pop up because of just because wacky people are in there. <laughs> Leon Lounge, you're in the pretzel gang too. I'm in the waffle gang. I'm in the waffle gang. I, I I just like waffles better. I like waffles better. But pretzel, there you go. Wild, wild and sober. There's your question answered. There's, I'm taking your channel points. What's your almost <laughs> fucked up moment if you'd like to share? Oh, you might have to refresh her memory. It's probably you were probably going off of something she said. Uh, wild but sober. What's your almost fucked up moment? If you can elaborate on it. I'd love to address it. Uh, yeah. Soft pretzels for life. You know what, Deadbeat? I thought we were homies, but now I see. Now I see. Uh, now I see your true colors. Fifty-two fifty. Yeah, I, I know what that number means. Uh, okay, why well, would Silver elaborate, and uh, we'll come back to it. What part of the country are you from? Sorry if I missed it. The Leon Lounge. I am in Michigan. I am in the states. I am. I'm right. Uh, north of Detroit, actually. There you go. Uh, I, did, I hope you enjoyed that. I mean, anything. Oh, okay. Uh, what's your, uh, what's an, um, okay, so then he's asking in general, what's an almost fucked up moment, if you'd like to share? Like, like, like I almost like, fucked something up? Or um, something almost fucked up happened? Like, maybe you almost Oh, maybe I said nothing is fucked earlier. Maybe that's because I think when I was telling that story hmm. about where we got to that place in Indiana and it was like, nothing is fucked. We're okay. Yeah. Maybe yeah. that's what it was. Maybe. Maybe. What was an almost fucked situation? Yeah. Because actually that particular situation did, uh, so many did fix itself. Actually that bar was very, very kind. And they actually oh. quit smoking in the afternoon and blew the whole place out. And it was a non-smoking gig. Um, Oh, Jen, that's a good one. But, oh, Trish, that's a good one too. See, they're so much better at uh, remembering than I am actually. This was, so I, I'm going to go with what Jen said, okay. which was that, so we were at a gig in the Valley in California, Tarzana, Ooh. and uh, so many horror stories, uh, but we were at a gig in the Valley and uh, earlier, oh wait, was this in the Valley? Uh, it doesn't matter. It was in, it was in California. So I... If, if anybody follows me on socials, they know that I have a chronic illness, an autoimmune disease called endometriosis. So if I don't do all the things I need to do, which I, is a lot of things I need to do to keep myself healthy and not having flare-ups, uh, I will have flare-ups. And when you're on the road for two weeks, you don't exactly get to treat your body the best you can. So right. we had already been on the road for about seven or eight days at this point, And I was having a terrible flare-up and I, all I could do was like lay down and cry. Like I was just not okay. And everybody was doing my job for me and setting up the merch. And I felt like shit. And, and I was just trying to be okay. Like it's, you know what, you know what I mean? Like you're in a public place, you're in a shit position yeah. and you just have to be okay for like a couple hours. <laughs> right. And so it's like, just try to be okay. I still have to get makeup on my face. Like I was just in a really shit place at this point. Right. So I'm laying right. down in a booth in this restaurant venue and the manager or maybe the owner comes over and was trying to help. He goes, um, well, are, are you okay? And I was like, no, I'm just, I'm having a really bad flare up day. I, I have an autoimmune disease, blah, blah, blah. I'll be all right. Just like, whew, like, I'm just trying to get through it. And he goes, do you need a Midol? <laughs> oh, shit. Can you explain to people what Midol is in case there's some men in the chat that don't know what the hell Midol is? Midol is a really shitty excuse for medicine that's supposed to help with uh symptoms of pms and your actual menstrual symptoms um so so yeah uh this was a a, a 
middle-aged to maybe 60-ish year old person, male. And it was, um, I, I did see red. I started screaming. I know that our bassist was there and he saw me and walked away. <laughs> he heard that situation happen and he walked away because he knew what was about to happen. Right. Just, I'm going <laughs> to, um, my dad happened to go out with us on this, this trip. So my dad was standing there and his face, he knew, he knew what was about to done happen. It was not, I started yelling. And the first thing I, the only thing I remember saying was the first thing that I said, and that was, do me a favor and never say that to another female oh. in the whole rest of your life. Yeah. Because, I mean, is there a because? I, Y'all know, I just, I, just assume that the female's problem is because she's on her period. That's what happened. And I started screaming and I don't even know what else came out of my mouth, but then the best part is this flash forward just a few minutes that person goes over to our manager kevin the you know who i was saying engineer producer co-founder driver of the winnebago kind of person mm -hmm. and says i think i pissed off your singer and kevin not knowing <laughs> anything about this he was in a separate part of the building setting up he comes over to me and goes what the fuck did you say to the owner and i said he asked me if i needed a my doll <laughs> and kevin was like Oh, yeah. never mind. Um, I'll go talk to him. <laughs> yeah, no good, no good. No so good. that was like, that was. Uh, thanks, Jen. I I handled it pretty well. I didn't go off on like crazy person tangent, but I did. I did my best to maybe educate him a little bit. Like, dude, you're like a sixty year old dude. Are you like what? Like, yeah, have I don't... you ever never been in a relationship with like the opposite? Right. Sex? I mean, like, I don't know what he was or whatever. Right. And maybe, just, maybe he had maybe, never maybe. been in a relationship right. with the opposite sex. But that's possible. Right. I, I don't know his situation. He did not elaborate, but I will say I thought that everything was fucked, but he, he handled it very well too. This, this manager owner person, because Kevin explained to him what had happened. That manager felt terrible. He came and apologized to me. Mm. And um, said, I'm so sorry, I didn't understand. And then he started to go on about his IBS problems. And I'm like, thanks. I mean, like, I appreciate it. I, un I understand that you understand, but thanks. Same thing, by the way, same thing. IBS and, and the period is same, same thing. So he knows same your thing. struggle. He knows your struggle. Oh my God, right? Like, I guess maybe it's as close to that struggle he right. might ever get. Yeah. And I can respect that he was trying to relate to me, right. but it was like, oh, too little, too late. But thanks, dude. Yeah. Mm. That is cringy. And you know what? I, yeah. I'm not going to sit here and pass judgment on this man because I'm, I'm, I was that dude. I was that dude. Until I met my wife currently, I... I mean, I was just an asshole degenerate, just running through life, drinking, uh, here we go. It is, it, I wasn't like, you know, womanizing or anything like that. I, I was, first of all, I, w I, I am not smooth with the ladies at all. And the fact that I have one of the smoothest ladies in, in the world on my side is, uh, yeah. is, is quite confounding. So uh, uh, the, it, I, I've been there, but, but, but I was educated. In the yeah. hard way, but I was educated, and, and like that's the thing is like, man, it doesn't take that much, you know, just to have a little bit of open mindedness and be like, hey, then like this part of a woman's life means that they're healthy, that the, this is like a health. You, you're talking <laughs> there's to there's nothing a, wrong with there's us. nothing wrong. This is a healthy person just going through what's happening in their life, and and like I mean, it, with their natural body cycle, you know, it's just how it is, and it's fine and it's it's and it, it you and should be happy else. you should be happy that your right. girlfriend is healthy and and doing it properly and everything's going smoothly just just be like good she's not dying or she's you know like it's good it's yes good that this, is, this is a good thing she's this not pregnant fine. good this let's is, go yeah. <laughs> let's go this is normal and it's yes. just so sad that like it's so perceived as like little like yes. no that's but this is literally the most normal thing mm -hmm. it's as normal as pooping 
Yeah. Can we just like, it's, it's as normal as any other thing. I get to talk about pooping a lot in streams. I'm really sorry. It always gets there. Hey, Here we are. Everybody um, poops. Everybody poops. It's a thing. Uh, but, but yeah, it was just, this really unfortunate situation, but I mean, it ended, it ended so much better than that situation could have ended. Like yeah. if that yeah. guy, and that's why I used it as an almost, <laughs> and almost fucked because if that guy had been anybody else like say he was some macho dude who was not going to fucking take my shit like that could have been resulted in us getting kicked out like period or like or or death or death right like you don't know these people we don't know these people we'd never Mm -hmm. played in this place before in this city at Mm -hmm. this venue like that could have been super fucked and luckily for me it wasn't but that's that's probably one of the best almost almost fucked uh, almost fucked that is a for good sure, one for sure that was good it was and it was very educational for all yeah. <laughs> we all get to learn from this <laughs> every healthy women bleed that's what happens mm, okay it's, it's normal it's normal yeah uh, all right i think this will tie in good to mental's question here women day is today and men day is on the 19th of november but here is a fact that World Toilet Day is also on 19th. No, oh, not November 19th day. Okay, so Toilet Day is on November 19th as well. Oh, well, thank you. That's not that's really a, funny. That's not a question, but you know that that's something. So it, that does make sense, though. I mean, dudes are just in the toilet all the time. I mean, that's just where we are. That's where we live, everybody. <laughs> that's where we live. My mind is in the toilet constantly. And physically, I'm in the toilet all the time. <laughs> okay, lots of poop talk here. Uh, do you have any horror stories? Okay, horror stories. Wild but Sober wants to know the horror stories. So this could range anything from a, 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 a dirty toilet to, uh, to a oh, ghost, man. paranormal activity. Uh, oh, actually, be... I have a good paranormal activity Let's one. go, let's go. We're doing it. <laughs> Is that way too loud for you, by the way? For me, no. Okay, I'm gonna turn it down anyways. I, I, just, I hope. <laughs> <laughs> Bonnie, what's up? Welcome, welcome, Adam Flair. Thank you so much for that sub. I want to say that out loud right now. Thank you so much for that sub. And um, by the way, can uh, I'm gonna just do it myself real quick? Uh, Adam Flair, everybody go follow Adam because Adam. Raina, can you do? Okay, come on. <laughs> like I already started. I'm just gonna do it now. Ugh. Uh, did she already? She probably already did it because she's a great mod, and I don't pay attention. Uh, look at this. Look at us go. All right, here we go. I okay. Thank you, Rain. <laughs> <laughs> Adam Flair is an amazing producer. He does uh, awesome, awesome like stuff. If, if you like the band Chromio, if you like Zap and Roger, uh, you're gonna love Adam Flair UK. Actually, Wild but Sober and me were in there this morning hanging out. Uh, yeah, uh, Adam Flair is amazing, and uh, he's working on this cool synth wave sample project right now. That's really cool. And he likes to do uh, uh, like he does like a DJ set in his shed, which he was doing it in in he was doing he's doing it in the UK in winter, and so he's out there drinking to stay warm. Uh, big love to Adam Flair UK. Thank you for being here, buddy. And he, and I forgot he is one of our first uh, subs here. He's a founder. Uh, anyways, Bonnie. Good to see you. Thank you for being here. You too, Bacon. Uh, so, paranormal. Where where are we? Where what, what what set the scene for us? Because I I love a good ghost story. So I I have always I'm always like I mentioned earlier. One of my de-stressing things is watching ghost shows. I adore <laughs> them. Uh, my favorites right now are Fright Club, <laughs> on Discovery. It's literally the Ghost Brothers and Jack Osborne, and they bring clips to the table and they like try to scare the shit out of each other Wait, it's so J- cute jack, i love it jack osborne the 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 is that the son the of, osborne's yeah that's the son of ozzy osborne yes wow. and yeah and that's what he's doing now yeah <laughs> right and he has his own show called portals to hell and let's just do a discovery <laughs> plus ad hey um, no but that's but, but seriously discovery plus has like fed my ghost hunting show my paranormal show addictions because there's ghost adventures ghost hunters ghost nation portals to hell all of these fucking just uh, like feed me feed me (laughs) all of the ghosts so i haven't had a ton of experiences with paranormal in my life like 
I feel like if you're open to it, if you're an empath, I am an empath. If you're open to feeling energy in a room, you might have felt something at some point in your life. I know yeah. I've experienced those kinds of things. Mm -hmm. um, like all throughout my life, uh, growing up in a house where people had died, not viciously or anything like that, but like of cancer and yeah. like, you know, just natural causes, stuff like that. I always felt certain things in that house. Uh, my parents still live there, by the way. I don't don't mm. love it, but uh, <laughs> I won't go there to do my laundry. But, uh, <laughs> yes, I won't go <laughs> hinder my parents with my laundry anymore because they live in a haunted house. <laughs> no, no, I. But it's just like it's it's a good example of how I feel like I I am open sometimes to paranormal vibes, if that makes sense. Yeah. Yes, it does. Um, but I haven't had too many experiences, ex 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 words are heard, experiences in my life uh, until me and Trish took a vacation to New Orleans, New Orleans, <laughs> New Orleans um, in January of 2019. So yeah, about two years ago then. And um, if anybody knows anything about New Orleans, it's that it's haunted as fuck. And so- here comes Trish because my camera is haunted as fuck today. <laughs> and um, so we spent how many days in, in New Orleans? I don't know, seven days? S seven, was that six? Se seven, sorry. She held up fingers and I couldn't see. Um, and so we had exactly zero paranormal experiences, but we were desperately doing all the things that kind of beg those things. Like you do yeah. the ghost walks and we did a ghost carriage ride and um, uh, eh. We stayed in a historical district. I forget what it was called, but we stayed in a historical district. And so we were kind of like, and going to all the voodoo places, right? Like <laughs> I'm so into NOLA culture. And on the last night, I think our airport, we had to be at the airport at like 6 a.m., like stupid, stupid early mm. uh, to come back to Michigan. And middle of the night, you know, like if you drop like ping pong ball. a ping pong ball, like, and you hear like, it drop and then the it, it gets faster and faster when you hear yeah. it. <laughs> it words yeah, yeah that uh just here in your head a ping pong drop ball dropping from a decent height maybe somebody's standing and dropping it and i heard it but like you're just kind of sleeping and then trish goes did you hear that and i was like yeah she was like you weren't supposed to hear that the answer was supposed to be no <laughs> <laughs> and so we both stood, we both were in bed a minute. We turned the lights on. We got up, we looked around, nothing was weird or anything. And then we laid back down with the lights on and we start hearing this fucking scratching. Like at the top of our wall, we were staying at in this house that was converted as a, like an Airbnb. So it was like this maybe triple level house that was probably two or three units per level. Mm -hmm. It was like this converted Airbnb house. Mm -mm. And so we were in the bottom level. It was under construction. The other, when we had gone outside in, in like during that week, we had noticed there were parts of the building that were still very much under construction that you could not access. And so it's like, we, we started to hear this scratching. They were brick walls, brick, just brick, cinder block maybe, but you know what I mean? Stone, yeah, brick, yeah. not plaster. Yeah. They were... Yeah literally stone or cinder block and we hear it up at the top of the ceiling but like it sounds like it's in the fucking room uh, it didn't sound like it was coming from the other side and then like we started to try to debunk it and we're like well what's on the other side and there's like, fucking nothing on the other side like it sounded like rats scratching at like the top of the brick wall uh, and my the, i'm shit you not <laughs> They're, the hair on my arms stand up every single time I tell this story because I have never been so scared in my fucking life. <laughs> and I, it was just, it was the craziest thing and it didn't stop. Uh, it did not stop. It happened. It kept continuing on for a long time. We, I, I sat up in the bed and I'm like, I can't be here. I can literally can't be here. <laughs> so I went out on the couch and we, we snuggled up on the couch and we did not sleep again. This was the middle of the night. We were supposed to get up at like 5.00 AM anyway but we did not sleep. It was, it was one of the scariest experiences. And, and we tried to leave, like not a, we didn't leave a bad review, but we, we tried to tell the owners what happened and they didn't respond to us. Um, and there was nothing in the log book about it. Cause you know how Airbnbs they'll have like a log book, people's experiences and stuff. Um, but 
but there was nothing about that. And we reached back out to them and told them the story and they never reached back out. And it was like, mm, maybe, I've, maybe. I've never had such a strong gut reaction to something like that in my whole life. And I've been scared before based on vibes of a room, uh, just not feeling terribly comfortable because I think that being me obsessed with paranormal shows, I'm just more apt to feel it, whether it's fucking real or not, or whether it's in my head or not, yeah. uh, because I just love paranormal stuff so much, <laughs> but it was, it was terrifying and we did not sleep. We got, we packed everything up. We were ready to go. When we decided we were leaving, I think we even left early for the, I was like, we just got to, I got to go. We got to go because like the pit of my stomach, I thought I was going to either puke or poop or both, or like, that's how upset physically my body was upset. It was, that's the best ghost story. I probably am ever going to have. Let's hope I don't have a better ghost story than that at some point in my life. (laughs) Thank you for that. Woo. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. Yeah, no, it. You know what's funny is that I I have a similar story like that. It was me and my girlfriend at the time. Hey, Danny. Welcome, welcome. Thank you for the woo. Good to see you. Uh, it was my girlfriend at the time. Uh, unless it's like Casper and you end up making out with Devin. <laughs> Bonnie's my friend. Hello, Bonnie. We're, be- we're BFFs now. My friend thinks I'm weird for all the paranormal shit. Hey, you know what? It, it's it's something that that people don't completely understand, and it's it's intriguing. And so, yeah, you, what are you gonna do? You know, but me, my 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 uh, my girlfriend at the time, uh, she her family had this cabin up at Devil's Lake in Michigan, like above. I don't know. It's it's over there in Michigan, and uh, <laughs> Danny, it's she. This is EBX Aaron. Just, just we'll get that out of the way. This is EBX, Aaron. There's your question. Answered your question, but uh, we, uh, we, um, so she had this house. It was this double story house that was old as shit. It was like from the 1800s or something built, and it's sort of it's it's a little bit away from the water. And they, what is she? What what is that? What does that mean, what Ken? I? What are you? <laughs> uh, we, we'll get there um so we, we go to she her and her family likes to go and stay at this house and they never really stayed in the house because um because it's old and there's a, two stories and there's like a bunch of old brass bedding up there from a long time ago and they just never took it down their family it's probably a pile of rubble now but so they would always camp outside on the property well, it was like rainy that night and it was crazy. And so she was like, well, let's just go sleep in the house. And I was like, oh, OK. And it was like lightning and shit. And so during the day, it's great. It's a nice, peaceful place to go and chill. But at night, it turns into this fucking house of horror. And plus, she has this wonderful little story that she tells us on the way up there. It was like, oh, yeah, my uh, my one of my uncles died as an infant. They hung themselves in one of the cribs because it was before they had regulations on how far apart the 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 bars can be. And yeah. so the the kid ended up getting stuck in there and, and dying. And so that was it, that was part of the vibe going up there. And so we move our operation indoors and <laughs> it's like the wind is blowing. There's fucking lightning going. And the whole house sways and there's like, you can actually see through the house. There's like no insulation. So you can actually see through the boards of the house and the house is swaying and we just start hearing this like sort of weird, not scratching, but it was sort of this weird knocking. And we're and, and we're trying to debunk it. It was like, well, it's probably like something, you know, like the wind blowing a stick somewhere or something, something. And the stupid fucking knocking is like, and you know, it, it, and when I think about now, it has to have been like the wind because it was crazy. But every yeah. so often we're just hearing and it's getting louder and louder. And we were like, fuck this. <laughs> <laughs> fuck this. We, we I, I was like, I can't deal with this. She couldn't deal with this. And so we went we, we actually went down to the beach because there's a little beach there and we just stay there. And then the lightning striking. So we, we freaked out. We went back and we're sitting in the car and 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 the house we could see it swaying and we just got the worst vibes because we were just like oh my god like we got such horrible vibes that we left 
in the middle of the night and yeah. went to and went to a uh, 24 hour McDonald's in Adrian and and we slept in the parking lot for for like a few hours and we left our shit we were just like we're come we'll come back during the day when the ghost and and the 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 the, the infant ghost can't come in and eat our soul or something it, it was just that thick like and, and like this yeah. place gives those vibes like you walk in you're immediately like this is not where you're supposed to be right now <laughs> like you are not welcome here whatever's in here does not want you here and uh, that 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 was the, that yeah so yeah fuck that listen to your intuition <laughs> listen to it yeah I mean I mean That's even if it's yeah <laughs> even if, even if you think you're just crazy just just be like you know what I don't like it I don't like the vibes here I don't dig it I'm out because yeah whatever whatever I mean like we might have never nothing might have ever happened probably nothing you know like nothing we probably wouldn't have seen shit but it was still like mm, nah fuck that we're not doing this not dealing with yeah. this kind of madness not today satan nope not today satan does that ghost face ever scare you at night it used to <laughs> every once in a while if you walk past so like this is a hallway mm. right here like our other bedroom is on the other side of this wall on this side and then the bathroom is right behind me so there's a hallway right here yeah and yeah. every once in a while if you go from the bedroom to the bathroom and you're and you come close enough to this doorway you can see the ghost face in the corner and uh -huh. it used to scare the shit out of me when i first put it there in october uh it it used to scare the shit out of me well it's like i don't know if you get this but like you it's almost like you see something on your eye but it's probably just like an eyelash or something and you go <laughs> <laughs> literally yeah but and then this this mannequin head used to do that yes. to me as well dude heads and no when i first when we first got into when we first moved back from ohio well when i moved back from ohio and my wife came with me uh from california we we moved into a spot that had uh that had like old china dolls that 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 were just up and mounted on the wall and like I don't know. These dolls are just this dead-eyed stare. And no matter where you walk in the room, it's like that dead-eyed stare is following you around like it's fucked <laughs> up. We no, we we had to we had to fucking take them down. We or put oh. stuff over them. It's like we didn't want the inanimate objects looking at us while we sleep at night. And and it, it it's just I don't know what that is. I don't know what that is. I mean, it's just it, too many ghost stories. Is it? Is it? You know, too many bad experiences. Movie. I don't know. I don't, too many movies. Like, what? What is it that makes us uh, afraid of of porcelain dolls? <laughs> the... There's so many movies. There are so right. many reasons. My mother collects porcelain dolls. Ugh. Maybe that's part of why the house is haunted. Um, <laughs> yeah, they attract the ghosts. There's there's so many dolls. She didn't collect them damn my my camera heard me talking yep. about haunted shit like, Fuck there it goes that. uh damn it close enough uh but it's it's um like relatives of hers that collected dolls and then they get passed down as if you're gonna collect them too but my mom like never wanted to get rid of them because some of them are worth something but she's not collecting them they're just in a giant storage bin but when i was little she used to keep them on display mm. because you have a little girl in the house maybe she'll like them someday right. and it's like no nah, nope nope, nope. Little they girl, creep mom. her out now too though she oh. actually put most of them away she's like this isn't my thing <laughs> <laughs> she put most of them away but that there was so creepy yeah yeah, and no, then they no. have is porcelain dolls called breathers because their mouths are open. Did you know this? Mm -mm. Trish is sitting in here shaking her head at me. Mm -hmm. It's it's because they're like they're made with an open hole in their mouth, and it looks like they have a mouth. It's real creepy, just like that. Uh, yeah. That if if you ever done any acting, <laughs> have you ever done any sort of acting or or like stage work where you have to like connect with other people and and. They have this thing called uh, Raina. What is that called when you guys stare at each other with your mouth open and just like blank face? Receiving. I've never done that. It's I was in drama club though. It's for called, a long time. It's called receiving, and the whole idea is to sort of make this dead eyed doll face, and you just stare into someone's eye who's sitting like two feet in front of you, and you just sit there and stare them like this with your mouth open, relax like. <laughs> And you stare no. them in, and you stare them in the eyes for 
like five minutes. F it, it, if it, it, five minutes doesn't sound long, but if you've ever worked out in intervals, it's a fucking long time, bro. A minute is your is death. A minute is death in interval yeah. training. <laughs> so no, I will read it. I will read it. I will read it. Just give me a second. Wait a second. You see, now I don't even remember what we're talking about. Wow, but so how dare you? How dare you? Creepy <laughs> dolls. Creepy dolls. Yeah. It, but but that whole receiving thing, I always hated that part of it. But ugh, plus, I was on narcotics. Oh yeah, <laughs> <laughs> narcotics help uh, with all that stuff. Uh, we didn't have a ghost face, but we had a weird crying type of face that looks kind of ghost face artifact hung on the wall. And the hallway is like 15 to 18 feet, and straight down the hallway on the wall those are hung Ugh. at night when i had to go down the hallway to get water bro i would almost cry and run someone's no <laughs> yeah you know what we all had that you know what scared the shit out of me when i was a kid going to all my my aunts uh because uh, my tias uh, in this catholic mexican family is all the grotesque uh, uh, of figures and paintings of, of Christ bleeding yeah. out on a cross like that. I knew that's where this was going. That All the crucifixes horrified yeah. me. It still does. It freaks me out that this bloody hanging Jewish guy is just oh, you know like it's it's I feel, it's just horrible. It's and this yeah. is hanging over your your dinner table. It's like okay, kids, it's time to eat spaghetti. Fucking let's pray to the bleeding guy with the thorns in his head and the, 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 the hole in his side with blood dripping down everywhere. It's like the most grotesque portrait of 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 like what a fucking what what a god should be. Like why or why why can't we just? I get it. He died for our sins or whatever. But it's like come on. Creepy dolls equals interval trading. Got it. Yes, exactly. <laughs> bacon. Exactly. You got it. He's you finally did it, my friend. Head on. Uh, okay, we got some more questions here, and then uh, we, we got to start wrapping this up a bit. Uh, were, were you afraid after the paranormal activity? So were you afraid afterwards? Did that did that linger? I'm, I'm thinking, right? Is that what you mean, mental? Did that sort of linger and turn into more? I think that that experience, not, not only did it linger for days, I couldn't stop thinking about it for mm. days. Like, I literally struggled to sleep. Oh, wow. uh days after that happened but also like this is a digression in a way but uh we had a really sick cat at the time and he died while we were gone Aww. in the care of one of my friends oh, so wow. like not only did we have this terribly terrifying paranormal experience that we believe to be ter terranormal <laughs> paranormal on the last night but we had lost our cat like the day before and so i was already in such a heightened emotional state um, that I think when I took all that, that in whatever empathetic state I'm normally in, I feel like it was like double tripled because we had just lost our cat, yeah. uh, while we were gone and we didn't get to be there. Oh, ghost cat. Yeah. Maybe, maybe Guster was trying to say goodbye. No, oh. I think he had already left at that point, but anyway, I digress. Um, I, it lingered for days and obviously the emotional strain of having an animal, uh, pass away isn't going to help when you're trying to get a paranormal thing out of your head. So it lingered for days. And then I definitely started to feel overall, like I could sense other things that were happening in this space, like this condo that we live in. Um, because we had just, because of the cat being ill and we had already planned a trip, you know how that goes. Like you can't stop life from happening, but you already have sunk thousands of dollars into a trip. All right. So now I'm sinking thousands of dollars into my cat. Also have, trying to leave to go to NOLA and not and, and use that money and en enjoy the trip. We had put in, oh, I just moved them. Damn. Uh, we had put in these wise cameras to, to keep an eye on the cat, mm -hmm. to make sure he was eating and drinking and pooping and all the things normally. And it was set to record with movement and it recorded an Orby in this room uh, a little orb crossing and, tr and I don't, I still don't know. I wish we had that piece of footage, but it, it doesn't get tripped by dust like, or else they would be recording all the time, but it 
was tripped by this little orb that flew by and Trish is like, it's a damn ghost. I'm like, no, it's not. And then we watch all these paranormal shows and they're like, oh, here's a light anomaly. She's like, it was a fucking ghost. It literally looks <laughs> it was a like fuck. it literally looked like the light anomalies that happen on these fucking shows. And I'm like, fuck, I guess you're right. And that happened like right here in this room. Uh, and so every once in a while I get vibed out in this room. Mm -hmm. Luckily it doesn't happen while I'm streaming, but there have been sounds and things that have happened in my technology that give me bad vibes and everything in this room is technology. No, mm -hmm. no, ma'am. No. Mm -hmm. So, but also we had our, our neighbor died a couple of years ago on the back patio, <sighs> right he had a heart attack or I, he, I think he either, he choked or he asphyxiated. I don't remember, but he was, he was an elderly man and he just, it was bad. It was terrible. And wait, he wait, died wait. on the patio Did next you, you door to saw ours. This happen? I didn't see it happen. What oh, was even God. more fucked up was that I was fucking home and I didn't oh, hear it. Oops. I did. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> appropriate though. Yeah. Um, yeah. What's even more fucked up is I was just home sitting, either fucking around on a computer or watching TV. I never heard him choking outside because he was, he had something along the lines of COPD, something like that. So mm. like if he was choking and hacking up a lung, that was relatively common. I know that sounds terrible, but it just, it was how his body worked and he was a smoker through and through. And like, just, he was always hacking up a lung and I didn't hear it anyway, but I, I got up to do something and I looked out my back window and there was an ambulance and every neighbor was out in, in the, in the, like the back area of this condo section mm. and he had passed away. It was crazy. And so every once in a while, if something weird happens here, I'm like, James fucking quit it. Like we, we, we know you're here. I know. Like, just watch over us. Chill. Just you're a good protector. That's it. Just chill out. <laughs> it's all good. We got yeah. it, James. Put your ghost BDE away. We get it. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. Uh, what is she? Okay, Danny. Uh, I can. <laughs> I can. I can answer the. She is a singer and she is a rocker and she uh, and she's a Twitch streamer. So there you go, Danny. Get that, 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 is there anything you want to add to that? I'm sorry. I, I don't want to speak for you. I am an interdimensional yes. female <laughs> of a different race. I don't know. Just that question. What is she? Yeah, that it just it's it doesn't <laughs> come off right, Daddy. I'm just saying it just doesn't it doesn't fall right on my ears or anyone's ears. Yeah. So uh, learning you know, experience. Hey, that's OK. Da Danny's a young buck. And so we're gonna we're gonna let it pass. We're gonna give him yeah. a pass on that. Uh, can an atheist believe in horror stories? Hmm. I think it depends on where the horror story is based in. Is it based in reality or is it just a story? Yeah, is a ghost story. So so let's modify that. Can an atheist believe in a ghost story? I think I mean it's that's hard because like do atheists inherently believe in life after death if they don't believe in a higher power? I actually don't I truly don't know the question to that or I mean the answer to that. Right. Yeah. Well, I mean it, it that that's what I'm assuming is what what's being said here is if you're an atheist then you don't believe that there is a soul that leaves the body that's somewhat conscious or whatever that that right. floats up into the to the clouds to go hang out with white and white god and white jesus so i don't i don't know you know i'm not sure um but get, uh, so yeah I, I i i think well wild but sober i saw him say that he is an atheist and he's and he's the biggest scared scaredy cat like last we did a halloween our halloween special was us telling ghost stories and, and he did the same thing i gotta go a brp <laughs> i gotta go <laughs> so if wild but sober who is a self-proclaimed a so-called quote unquote atheist um, so then there is something, yeah, it's one in the morning for you as well. So it's also a little extra, it, it's in the, in the darkness of night. So that, that also adds to things, but, but yeah. it, that, that does sort of a contradicting uh, reality, right? Like that's not really something that, that doesn't make much sense. If you don't believe there's an afterlife and you don't believe the human body emits a soul that's shot up to white Jesus or red devil, um, then, then uh you you uh then that doesn't make sense i don't think you can you you can't while but sober you you're it's wrong 
you can't do any you do believe in reincarnation shut up <laughs> shut the fuck up with that shit <laughs> get out of here okay so so you're an atheist that believes in reincarnation I, I gotta know how that works while but sober I, I, I'm, it's okay you know what but that's the whole thing people are contradicting people can hold two different it's like what which i'm not trying to take it there but it's like when a a, chi- a victim of child abuse can still love the abuser right because it's still their parent mm-hmm. and it's like so there's these contradicting uh things that happen in our minds that don't make sense but that's human that's humanity that's what we are so it's fine i was just fucking with you while but sober i love yeah i know what <laughs> spake is bacon <laughs> reincarnation doesn't mes- necessarily necessarily mean god or shit it's like people <laughs> believing in karma yeah yeah well you know that's another thing right it's like what goes around comes around i definitely have that i i, I believe that i've seen it happen in real life i don't know how godly i am but uh, let's move on to the next story because Aaron needs to get out of here. <laughs> the next story. What? Uh, can and, Okay, so we answered that. And, and the answer is no, mental. No. <laughs> Atheists are not allowed to believe or, or to, to believe in ghosts. Aaron, do you have a priest show ritual? And this is LaCruz music, which everybody go follow LaCruz. She's wonderful. She's a new streamer and she's killing it. Um, nice. She's very, she's very talented. Very talented. I, I enjoyed lurking in your stream last night. Um, I need to go follow. Um, but I followed. Yay. Anyway, um, <laughs> pre-show. I, so I mean, for me, uh, and I'll, I guess I'll lump this all together between real life and now streaming because we kind of treat stream days as show days. Like for me on a gig day slash stream day, it's very much, um, (laughs) mild. Um, it's very much like I have to make sure that I have the correct amount of sleep. I have to make sure that I eat properly. I have to make sure that my head is in the right space. Um, I try not to do too much literal work. Like even if it's just staring at a computer screen, because it's still staring at a computer screen, and, and, you know, mental power, if you will. So it's, it's kind of like, for me, it's just making sure that I am as comfortable as possible. And, and I also don't watch sad movies (laughs) for me. I think more, it's more or less what I don't do Mm. more than what I do do the, the, what I do do really (laughs) more than what I have to do, uh, other than make sure I eat and, 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 drink water and, and sleep, you know, Mm. but I have to really keep a clear head. Uh, it's like, you kind of have to keep your head in the game. I don't know if there's any people who might be listening who were sports players, but I also, before, you know, when I was a kid, I was having an identity crisis. I played volleyball for a couple of years and, uh, before music overweighed sports and it was, it's like game day. It's, you keep your head in the game. You, you distract yourself with nothing. If at, if at all possible, because the best performance you can give is if you're totally undistracted. Uh, but obviously real life happens, you know, you get a phone call, somebody's sick, somebody's dying, or you get an email that you got to answer. And you're like, fuck that really stressed me out. Um, it's, it's really all about making sure I have enough spoons. I talk about spoons a lot to give everything I have to the stream or the gig, whatever it is, whenever it is that day, I would say that it's a lot easier to keep myself in that space for streaming because it's up to you when your gig starts. Mm. Uh, but in real life, gigs don't start till eight, nine, 10, 11 o'clock at night. So now you've woken up, you've had a whole day and you still got to be okay. So it's just kind of, it's like it, it's like an exercise in really staying calm and again nothing is fucked it's just you have it's an exercise in staying de-stressed mm-hmm. for me yeah. and also drinking water and drinking water <laughs> and and uh, you know like I, I i like to work out i like to uh make sure i eat healthy that day i like to make sure that you know I, i'm not in in any I hate going into it with in any bad spirits like if me and yeah. my wife maybe get a little spat i don't like that like any sort of negative thing that will influence my performance or whatever. I mean, cause even this is a performance for me. I'm not, 
I mean, I am this outside of this, but it's definitely a little amplified. You know, I'm not always like, hey, yeah. what's going on? <laughs> ah, you know, it's, which I'm not even that right now. <laughs> you know, that's not what I am. But I, I you know, it, you got to sort of, like you said, keep your mind, your head, your head in the game. And it's sort of a discipline as well. It's it, it, I mean, you work so hard to work on your 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 music, your, your music musicality that you work so hard to, to learn and, and to get good at it and why and that in itself is a form of discipline that you have to deal with you know early on in this game so so it's just part of it it's just part of having a disciplined way like i don't like eating yeah. shitty food before i perform and like you're saying, especially if you're on the road all day, it makes it really uh, hard. You travel all fucking day just to get there right on time to load in and sound check. And then you're gone. And it's just like, ah. Yeah. You it's the eat. hurry up and wait syndrome. Yes, exactly. And that's and that's the fucking worst shit it is, is, is hurry up, get it all done. Or you're stuck traveling all day. Right. And you literally, you've lost all your energy sitting in a van or an RV for 10 hours. Yeah. And now you've got to turn it on and go. Yeah. That shit is the most toxic shit i hate it <laughs> and you don't even gotta look pretty to do it yeah. i have to look pretty to do it it's like true. you know how hard it is to look pretty on the road <laughs> i mean i i got a, i got a, i got a little bit of an idea i mean it, it, it does take some work to maintain this gonna, hey hey hey, and this hey i didn't chance. say it didn't take any work but but <laughs> you're just hold on this is right hey Oh yeah, hold on. <laughs> you're a very healthy person, so like you have no double to me on the ham. I'm sad as shit. Um, okay, we got one more question. I'm so sorry we're dragging this out for you. Um, I'm you not, know, it's totally okay. I'm you're not right. growing a beard while it's over. It's a patchy Mexican stash type thing going on here, so it doesn't work. I'm I'm Mexican, so it's all patches. It's all patches. It doesn't work. Oh. Uh, let's see. The thing that I is assuming almost all of us were raised religious or mildly religious. Now going from that to being an atheist, you tend to retain something which you can't get rid of. So if I encounter something paranormal, me as an atheist, I might say I'll use science instead of religion at that point. But my first instinct would definitely not be science because at that fucking instant, you can't think science unless you were raised as an atheist. You know what? You're absolutely right. Hip Hop Citizen, thank you so much for that follow. I appreciate that. Thank you so much. Um yeah, I agree. I have like uh, I have generations of Catholic guilt just embedded into my very spirit. So I know exactly what you're saying, Wild But Sober. And um, to let, let's let's finish this up with Aaron. Would you do the Lorraine once, please? Bible thump. And that's oh. Wild But. <laughs> oh, I talked over. Can you do it one more time? No, you do good. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> thank you Aaron at EXB Aaron is going to be streaming directly <laughs> after this we're going to do uh, the reverse mohawk shave so she's going to go and run and get ready for her stream and get set up and then we're going to raid over so uh, Aaron I'm going to let you go uh, What? What? how can people find you real quick on your way out how can people find you get a hold of you or, or, or whatever and I'm going to put your information in the chat as well that is not the right thank oh just kidding there it is. <laughs> there you. it is. Uh, that's all I was going to say was I am EBX underscore Aaron on pretty much everything. Twitch, Insta, Twitter, uh, literally anything that I use TikTok. I've been trying to utilize TikTok a little bit more too. Uh, but yeah, thank you so much for having me. Thank you for um, compromising your time for me so Sorry. I could get on on time. I really no appreciate it so very much. No worries. No worries. I, I, it was all good. It was all good. I, I don't mind being accommodating to my guests, but Aaron, get out of here. Go set up. Get ready. We're and coming I, over. <laughs> and I'm still okay. going to sit here and lurk with you open on my galaxy so I can okay. watch the fuckery of this happen. OK, I'm going to be lurking. I'm still here. <laughs> <sighs> of course you will be. Of course you're going to see this. OK, Aaron, <laughs> thank you so much. You have a great rest of your day and I'll, we'll see you very soon. Thank you. Yes. Thank everybody you so say, much. Bye. Say bye, everybody. Woo. Oh, wait, there you go. <laughs> All right, guys, we are going to go ahead and uh, set up for our um, oh. we're going to go ahead and set up for the 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 reverse Mohawk shave. So if you are interested in this, 
<laughs> this what is about to occur? Well, um, we had a community uh, a community goal that was set uh, by Mango Bright, uh, who uh, who is not even here for it. Mango! And so uh, 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 